was during his first overseas tour as president to the Muslim country of Turkey that Barack Obama said the United States is not and will never be at war with Islam. Which is why our next story is provoking so much controversy. It concerns inscriptions that refer to biblical texts on weapons being deployed by American forces. Here's our chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross. Brian? Martin, to prevent the suspicion the United States is conducting a Christian crusade against Muslims, members of the U.S. military in Iraq and Afghanistan are strictly prohibited from proselytizing, promoting any religion, faith, or practice. It's called General Order Number 1. But apparently, one of the Pentagon's big suppliers never got the memo. Some soldiers call them Jesus rifles. That's because the sights on their guns, including this one used to train soldiers in Iraq, contain a secret coded reference to New Testament passages about Jesus Christ. Here, JN 812, a reference to the book of John, chapter 8, verse 12, which reads in part, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. They know it's wrong, and it's not just wrong, it's an outrage. Michael Weinstein runs the Military Religious Freedom Foundation, which claims thousands of members in the U.S. military who he says are endangered by the secret Bible codes. It is a big deal. Uh, we've had many, many soldiers reach out to us. Uh, some are oblivious, but many, many others, and the thousands are well aware that it's there. They've described it as a sick and a, a very scary joke, and that it allows the Mujahideen, uh, the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, the insurrectionists, and jihadists to be claiming that they're being shot by Jesus rifles. Other sites have references to the New Testament books of Matthew, Revelation, and Corinthians, such as this scope used by special forces, encoded with another reference to a verse about the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The rifle sites are produced by the Trijicon Company of Wixom, Michigan, which has almost a billion dollars in Pentagon contracts. A company spokesman says its founder, Glenn Binden, a devout Christian, began the practice years ago, and it has continued since Binden's death in 2003. The Trijicon spokesman said there was nothing wrong or illegal about adding the biblical references to the military sites. Well, that's fine, uh, but I find something wrong with it, and I think our government should find something wrong with it. Retired Major General William Nash commanded the 1st Brigade of the 3rd Armored Division during Desert Storm in Iraq. He is now an ABC News consultant. There's a lot of organizations that provide Bibles to soldiers and uh, Torah and uh, other, and even copies of the Quran are given out to our soldiers. Uh, I have no problem with that, but I do have problems with military equipment uh, being labeled in such a way that it it's, it seems like it's our God against their God. General Nash says the Pentagon should make the company remove the biblical codes. They should fix them all. They do a modification on the sites to take off uh, those inscriptions. And, uh, and uh, if they fail to do that, they should be penalized monetarily. At the Pentagon, the Army and the Marines told ABC News they were unaware of the biblical codes until we contacted them. One of the really cool things that I like about this site... But on gun enthusiasts and military websites, the presence of the New Testament references seem well known, as this gun reviewer pointed out the passage from the book of John. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, yes, Trijicon, those guys are Christians. And, um, you know, they, they're just, uh, in all of their different sites, they have verses on there. So just a little neat side note. And for those of you who aren't Christians, well, you know, whatever, get over it. All right. So anyway, we received information just uh, uh, very recently from one of our clients indicating that uh, the rifle was referred to as the spiritually transformed firearm of Jesus Christ. Even with the general order against religious proselytizing. The biblical references on the rifle sites is only the latest example of a clash in the U.S. military over Christian symbols and preaching in Iraq and Afghanistan. Two years ago in Afghanistan, American documentary filmmaker Brian Hughes saw boxes of New Testament Bibles published in Afghan languages. It was clear that those Bibles were there for the purpose of being distributed to the Afghan people, not to other soldiers, not to... Uh, other people on the base, but to Afghan civilians. So it was clear that they were 
prepared to operate outside the boundaries of, uh, of General Order No. 1. Filmmaker Hughes recorded U.S. Army Chaplain Gary Hensley in a provocative sermon at Bagram Air Base. You know, special, the Special Forces guys, they hunt men, basically. We do the same thing as Christians. We hunt people for Jesus. We do. We hunt them down. Get the hound of heaven after them. So we get them in the kingdom. Right? That's what we do. That's our business. Now the tiny biblical codes on the U.S. military rifle sights used by the Army and the Marines, as tiny as they are, seem certain to raise the issues again. We're training the Iraqis and the Afghans uh, the members of the military on these very same weapons. They're training on weapons with biblical references from the, the New Testament on, uh, on there. It's, it's unbelievable. This is how we're going to win friends. It's not known precisely how many of the rifle sites with the secret Bible codes are now in use by the military. But the Trigicon company just received a $660 million contract to be the sole supplier to the U.S. Marine Corps and its sites are the preferred choice of the U.S. Special Forces. As of tonight, the military was still trying to figure out what, if anything, it plans to do about that.